Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. My name is Erin. If this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy, which is hopefully going to be your favorite place on the internet. So today's reading vlog is going to be one that has been a long time in the making. So let me take you back to 2020 around October November I was asked to be a guest host for the Literally Dead book club and we were reading Catherine House. I read Catherine House I loved it I loved the discussion and at this time in my life my reading tastes were becoming more varied more broad it was like a year into me joining booktube and I was like I absolutely love this so I need to make sure that I'm keeping up with the book club. So fast forward to 2021 the book club picks started getting announced and I picked them up whenever the quarterly announcement would come out and I was so kind as to be asked to host for the month of March and I want to say September and I read those books loved one didn't love the other but I had this really bad habit of picking up all the books for the book club and only reading the books that I was co-hosting. So I ended that year with eight books that I bought specifically for this book club that were a bit outside of my comfort zone in some ways because I was still, you know, trying out my reading taste and they have just been languishing on my shelves. So here we are in 2023. We're going to fix that. I'm going to be reading A Year of Literally Dead. Literally Dead is a mystery thriller horror book club founded by Kayla from Books and Lala. I absolutely adore Kayla. At this point, I have been on a literary double club like four or five times, and I'm already slotted in to be back in 2024. It is my favorite book club that I participate in that isn't my own, and I'm always following along, and I always have something interesting to say about the books that Kayla chooses. And in this video, we are going to be reading and reviewing the 10 books that were chosen in the year of 2021. I want to thank the sponsor of today's video book of the month listen it is a happy day in the booked and busy household when this little blue box shows up at my door i have been a long time partner and fan of book of the month when i'm not working with them i'm subscribed to them because they do two things that i really appreciate they save me time and they save me money they save me time by curating a list of five to seven new and early release titles so i can spend less time searching what books are coming out what books are to be at the top of my tbr and more time reading they also save me money because they provide a discounted rate for new and early release hardcover fiction. If you've been into a bookstore lately, you know that a brand new adult hardcover is going to run you between $28 to $35. And with Book of the Month, you can get your first box for $15.99. But they were so kind as to offer the code GOBBLE to the Booked and Busy viewers that you can use to get your first box for $9.99. That is one third of the price for a brand new hardcover book. You can't beat that. So first up, because Book of the Month does focus on new and emerging authors, they have a release that I've never heard of, but as soon as I read the synopsis, I knew I had to have it, and that is This Spells Love by Kate Robb. About this woman who puts this hex on her ex, and she wakes up in an alternate reality where she's lost a lot more than she's bargained for. Really looking forward to this one. I'm planning to get to this one this month. Next up, we have a very anticipated release, and that is Check and Mate by Miss Allie Hazelwood. This is Allie Hazelwood's YA romance debut, and this one is centered around chess. We follow this young woman who is like a chess prodigy, but she is not running in the typical chess circles, and then she decides to do one last match, and she beats the person who is the notorious king killer and the reigning champion and bad boy of chess now i find it hard to believe that there are bad boys in chess but i'm sure miss ali is going to convince me if you are interested in picking up either of these for yourself or you want to pick out any of the other titles for the month of november you can use the code gobble like i said to get your first book box for $9.99 and if you are more of an audiobook girly book of the month has recently released audiobooks so you have the option of choosing a hardcover to come straight to your door or choosing an audiobook in their app whichever works best for you once again i want to thank book of the month for sponsoring today's video and i'm so excited to read my new books in the month of February 2021, the book club selection was When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, which is a gentrification thriller, possibly a social horror that features a black main character and a white love interest. March 2021 was a month that I was co-hosting and the book club selection was a horror novel, which is House of Leaves. This is obviously one of the ones that I've read. This is one of my favorite horror novels. It's a five-star read and this is a book about a house that is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside and a tale that spans several groups of people and is a story that makes you feel like you are losing your own mind. 
April 2021 saw the book club reading Every Value Break by Peter Swanson. This is a thriller about a woman who cheats on her husband or her fiance uh, at her bachelorette party and that man shows up at her wedding and on her honeymoon and things get scary from there. In May we were checking out books that were good for her with They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This is a dual perspective thriller novel about a woman who is a serial killer and she writes the wrongs that men have committed on her college campus. In June they were reading The Lost Ones by Sheena Kamal. This is a missing person detective style novel where we follow a character who works as an investigator and she finds out that the biological daughter that she put up for adoption 15 years ago is missing and she might be the only person that can find her. Next month in the month of July we were reading a repeat offender for the Literally Dead book club. He is literally a book selection every single year and that is Mr. Riley Sager with survive the night this is a thriller novel that takes place in the 90s and we follow our character who has recently uh, lost her roommate due to a tragic accident and the things that are happening around her she's really crumbling under the pressure while this is going on at the backdrop of this college campus there is this campus killer our, our friend takes a ride home with a mysterious man and things are not what they seem in august we were taking a journey into academia with for your own good by samantha downing this one is following a teacher of the year who harms his students for their own good in september another month that I co-hosted, we were reading the follow-up novel from one of Kayla's all-time favorite authors, Mona Awad, and this is All's Well. This is a story about a woman who has severe chronic pain and she is putting on this play with her theater students. She wants to put on All's Well and they want to put on Macbeth and there's a bit of a mutiny. In October, we are reading another favorite author of Kayla's in the first book in the Angel Lake trilogy and that is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a book about our main character Jade who is obsessed with horror movies and she feels like her town is about to be the next location for a real life slasher. In the month of November, this is the month where there is a bracket style tournament to determine what will be the final book for the year for Little Day Book Club and this year it was won by The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. This is a bit of a gothic horror novel about this woman who proposes marriage to this doctor and he agrees of oh, the only stipulation is that she never visits his family home. Of course things go awry from there. This is a vlog that has a lot of mixed results. I'm excited to take you through my thoughts on each and every one of the book club picks. Make your predictions in the comments down below. What do you think will be my favorite and will be my least favorite i will leave a link to the most recent literally dead book club announcements so you can check out if you like this vlog you can go and check out some of the other books that have been selected for the literally dead book club and participate in the final live show of the year hello friends i am here to bring you an update i'm about to get ready for bed but I have done some reading so let's talk about it. So starting out with the first book for the vlog I have read When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole and I gotta say going into this one when I started it I really wasn't liking it and this let me let me back up let me give you a synopsis first. So this is a standalone thriller about um this neighborhood in Brooklyn that is being gentrified at an alarming rate and also about the cycles of gentrification and how people are moving into the neighborhood, white people specifically, and are pushing out and pricing out people who have lived in this neighborhood for generations. And how that's something that's happening all across the country and especially in major cities and how the, and the impact that that has on a neighborhood and on the people living there well in this case it seems like there's something a bit more sinister going on because people are disappearing left and right and there's this tour that is like the kickoff point for this story that is a neighborhood like walking tour about the historic elements and places in this neighborhood and it's very white centric and we meet our two main characters Sydney and Thea. Sydney is a young black woman recently divorced who has moved back in with her mother. Her mother who is sick and ailing and she is very angry about the direction the neighborhood is going and she and that is like you see that in the opening scene because so many of the things that the tour guide is pointing out are things about the slave owners or the wealthy white people hundreds of years ago who lived here or the white people of today and she's like 
this is actually this black person this notable black person who did this and this and that and she's like what you're doing is not a representation of this and so the girl's like why don't you do your own tour and so leading up to this like annual block party she decides to host her own neighborhood walking tour about the prominent events and black people of this area and we were following our other main character, Theo, who is a white man, and he is kind of in a relationship, but kind of not with this woman named Kim. They recently moved in, but they're going through some things, and so they're not really together, but they're still living together. And he takes an interest in Sydney and her project and decides to help her out. And that's like the setup of the story. The first half of this is kind of where the book loses me, and I read some reviews, and I agree that the first half is definitely more focused on the romance that is developing between Sydney and Theo and also it really paints Sydney as this angry black woman and you know there's so much to be said about the angry black woman stereotype as if black women don't have plenty of reasons to be angry and also that like frustration and irritation and nervousness and all these things often show up as anger in black women specifically um but anyone in this situation would be angry about the things that they are that are happening to their neighborhood to their neighbors who are like a family to them and you know sydney had a lot of hard times in her life recently and she's had a lot of struggles with her divorce and her mental health but another thing that I dislike about it is that Sydney is painted as this unreliable narrator her mental health has been called into question and she calls it into question herself she is drinking she is smoking she is taking pills and all these things together just don't paint a very positive picture and that isn't to say that every experience and every part of your life will be a positive one and you will react positively to it, but it just wasn't pleasant to read about, nor do I find her a particularly likable character. And for a story that is about gentrification and about white people pushing black and brown people out of their neighborhood and out of their spaces and things like that, and like the sinister underbelly of all that, to have this black woman have a white love interest just... <sighs> It just doesn't leave a really nice taste in my mouth. Um, the second half is where a lot of the thriller elements come in. And I found the thriller and the thrilling elements and the suspense were a lot stronger than the first half. But at that point, so many missteps had already been made that it, it was hard to redeem. And so for the first half, I would have said this is a two star. But the, the second half and the way that the community comes together and the... I, I actually liked the bits of history that we got. It feels, on one hand, I, I understand why it was there because she is crafting this walking tour. But on the other hand, it definitely pulls you out of the story and seems like we're getting like miniature history lessons in a way. Um, but the thrilling parts were quite thrilling the sinister events that were taking place the like conspiracy that was going on i feel it feels very real and like something that very much could have happened is happening somewhere in the world maybe not as overtly as what's going on in the book but definitely i could i could totally see that so uh, if you obviously haven't read it already, I think that if you can make it through the first half, there's a lot of payoff in the end, but ultimately it is a three star read for me. In March, we were reading House of Leaves, which is going to be the second time that I was a co-host for the book club. And this is like a cult favorite horror novel. It's one that sticks media. There are elements where you have to turn the book upside down. It's really an experience uh, to read this. And one thing about me, I am going to wait till the last minute to do something. So here we are the night before the Little Dead Book Club live show and I said okay I'm going to read this entire book in one sitting because I have no other choice. And I remember reading this and feeling like the book was bigger on the inside than it was on the outside because you have to go back and forth, you have to read the appendices, you have to read the footnotes. And this was one of the most magical reading experiences I can ever remember having. I felt like I was losing my mind. I didn't feel safe in my body, in my home. I felt like 
the things that were happening to the characters in the book were also happening to me it was suspenseful it was horrific it was surprising it was shocking it was emotional it's everything that i would want or i think people want from horror this is a book that makes you work for it and i really enjoyed working for it um and i have such positive experiences of reading this book this is a book where your mileage will absolutely vary it's a book that you have to put so much work into it to get the story but i do think that it is worth all the time and effort that you have to put into it so in this one we follow our main character it, there are a couple of different main characters but this is a kind of a book within a book within a book situation so the house of leaves or house of leaves is a book within this book and it is at the center it is a story about this family who move into this house and the father is a filmmaker and he puts cameras all around the house to just document things that they do as a family and to maybe turn it into something larger well as they are moving in and getting settled they find out that the house is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside because i think there's like a quarter inch more and there this room this door opens up and there's an adventure about them and the people they call into their home to kind of investigate what is going on in this house and that is what's happening inside the inside of the book and then outside of that we have a character who is reading this story and he is annotating it and marking it up and then we have another character who has found the annotations of that story and is reading and annotated and marking it up and there's things about music there's things about theory there's science mathematical equations and so so many things that happened in this book that I just think like I even tab this book up um I'm not even a person who tabs there are pictures there are letters there are songs there are things that like just like black space there are things that are struck out and the way that I read this um there are so many different ways that you can read it but I essentially read every chapter twice I read the core story the first time through reading the chapter and then I went back and I read all the footnotes and all the notes and all the other things and going back to the appendices or whatever it's referencing I did it that way and I really enjoyed my reading experience I know some people read everything at once but that felt really disjointed to me some people read the whole book and then went back and read all the appendices and all the things like that so there's no one right way to experience house of fleas but i promise you it is a book you will have feelings about it will bring something out of you whether it's just frustration and anger that is made in such a stupid way that you can't just read it and enjoy it but overall i love this book five out of five stars it was one of my favorite books that i read that year some cleaning and some laundry to do tonight so I started the audiobook of Every Value Break by Peter Swanson and in this one we're following our main character Abigail on the eve of her wedding and on her bachelorette trip she has a one night stand with this mysterious man they don't exchange like their real names but Abigail does offer up some personal details about herself that honestly is a I personally wouldn't say that much about myself, but obviously you're giving people the benefit of the doubt, things like that. But if you're being anonymous, she gave away so many details that make it very easy for this person to find her, and they do. And she starts getting emails, and this person starts showing up places that she is. And she lives in New York, but her bachelorette was in California. So she's like, how am I seeing this person and smelling their fragrance and they're the cigarette that they smoke and all these things are really like giving her an unsettling feeling and she is someone who comes from a working class background she struggled financially and she is marrying this man who is very wealthy and who wants to take care of her and she's not really sure if she's all in, in this relationship and whether that's because you know the security or because she doesn't feel that spark or she's having these doubts because of this like flame that she had with this man whatever she goes through with the wedding that's where i am right now i am 92 pages in which is about 30 percent i think because this is just over 300 pages long so right around 30 percent and she is on this her honeymoon now but her honeymoon seems a bit strange She's at this resort, this like camp place that a friend of her husband owns and it's like off the grid, no technology, um, no internet, things like that. And there are very few women there. And so she's noticing things are a little bit unusual and unexpected, but she's trying to roll with it. And where I just left off because my mother called me, she is 
think thinking that she's smelled this specific specific French cigarette that the guy that she had this one night stand with smoked and she's like well of course he can't be here like I didn't even know we were coming here so he couldn't have known we were coming here it just maybe it's like it's a common brand of French cigarettes uh but we the reader we can assume that Mr. Man, who's she doesn't know him, he didn't give nearly as many details about himself as he was asking her about her and red flag. But yeah, that's what's going on with this. And I'm not particularly loving it. I'm not particularly engaged. This I wanna say is my first Peter Swanson. Um and from what mostly from what I've heard, it's not a, like his strongest book. I think the one that people like the most of his is uh, the kind worth killing so who knows maybe if uh, the twist is twisty enough or something like that I might pick that one up later but yeah I'm gonna read more of it tomorrow on my commute to work and I will talk to you then with some more updates good morning my friends we are overdue for an update I am getting ready to head out to work so I wanted to talk to you really quickly because I had a few minutes before my Uber came so I finished Every Vow You Burn by Peter Swanson. And I gotta say, this book just continued to get crazier and crazier. Uh, definitely made me fearful of marriage and of rich men, which I think are things that are already worth fearing. Um, I don't think this is a, cause I finished this a couple of days ago and I, I don't think this is a book that's gonna stay with you really well i don't think it's one that you if you haven't read already given that it came out two years ago i don't think it's one that you need to rush out and pick up i think it's okay but it's nothing spectacular uh i'm settling on a three-star rating because if nothing else i was entertained and i didn't have to deal with it for long and very early on like the sinister thing started happening uh so it was questionable and unsettling a little bit not really but uh, enough that you notice something odd was happening in the first half and then the second half you really see the thriller parts come out and when the reveal started happening i was like i cannot believe this like the conspiracy the levels in which this conspiracy was was going on like very interesting so I definitely think this is a good book to have for a book club discussion because I think there's a lot to say about it, especially about when you actually find out what's going on on this honeymoon. I think there's a lot to talk about. So I think it was a good book club choice, but it's not a particularly memorable book in any form or fashion. So I picked that up. I also was listening to that while I was out running some errands and you know picking up some books. So I did buy three books and I did get I did receive one in the mail, so I want to talk to you about them really quickly. So I picked up A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I'm giving this author a second chance, and this is her, I want to say, YA debut. I read her adult debut, which was uh, The Wolf and the Woodsman, and I DNF that one half halfway through. But I've heard pretty good things about this, and people say it's very atmospheric and like a perfect read for this autumnal season. So I wanted to pick this one up. Um, the premise is a little bit wonky, I'm not going to lie. It has a lot of elements that I'm not really sure how they work together because we're following this girl who gets the opportunity to like renovate her favorite author's house after the author's passing which I don't understand why you would even want to do that but because of the historical nature of the house she's paired with someone from like the historical society and there's something sinister afoot and there's also this fairy king and I'm not sure how the fairy king plays into everything else but here we are. I also picked up Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. Uh, and then I guess the exclusive part is that it has this like poster in it. I don't know who this is, but it has this poster. I actually think I like the original cover better than the Barnes & Noble edition, but that's neither here nor there. And I picked this up because this is Cassie's adult debut and I anticipate this being on the Goodreads Choice Awards this year. And last but not least, I picked up The Aeronauts Windless by Jim Butcher. This was is the first book in the Cinder Spire series, but eight years later, the sequel is finally coming out, and so they recovered it, so I picked it up. Um, I've had my eye on this series before, but I never picked it up because I knew it was a sequel, a, a series, but in eight years, we hadn't had a sequel. So, 
pick this one up and this is another author that i'm giving a second chance i think i'm going to be doing a, like giving authors a second chance reading vlog because the third author that i was sent this particular book is another author that i'll be giving a second chance and that is matthew ward so this is the darkness before them and this is the first book in the soul fire saga this is the author of the legacy trilogy which starts with legacy of ash i read i started reading that back in 2020 and i also dnf'd it but this synopsis sounds a lot more intriguing it says there are dark times for the kingdom of Kalad as the magical mists of the veil devour the land the populace struggles beneath the rule of ruthless noble houses and their uncaring immortal king cat doesn't care about any of that a talented thief she's pursuing one big score that was settle the debt that destroyed her family no easy feat in a realm where indentured spirits hold vigil over every vault and treasure room however cat has a unique gift she can speak to those spirits even command them she'll need every advantage she can get Kat's not a hero, she just wants to be free, to have her old life back. But as the rebellion rekindles and the war for Kalad's future begins, everyone, Kat included, will have to pick a side. And it's blurbed, well, that first book was blurred by John Gwynn, which I didn't love. But I'm excited to see what this is, because I'm always down to give authors a second chance, especially if it's in a different series, because the project of the, of the story is different, and, you know, I could enjoy it. So, my Uber is here, so I'm going to head out to work, and I will talk to you later. Bye! so i come bearing bad news this was the book that i had the highest hopes for um of the books that i had not read for this vlog this was one of two that i thought could possibly be a five-star prediction because ever since it came out i've seen nothing but glowing reviews and people just saying how good it was and it's funny because when i mentioned in my patreon that i wasn't liking it one of my patrons anna was like hmm well it is sapphic so i guess i'm not surprised and i was like had i connected the dots i probably would have known that i wouldn't have liked it either but that is they never learned by lane fargo this is pitched as like a good for her novel where we're following our main character scarlet who is a professor at this small liberal arts college and she is obviously on the tenure track but she has she moonlights she moonlights as a serial killer and she makes men suffer for their actions and she holds them accountable um and she at the beginning of the novel we see her killing this jock who is um a party that was he was a part of a sexual assault that happened to a female student on campus and she knew that he wouldn't be dealt with and so she decided to take it down to her own hands and she has a long history of that and she has set her sights on this coworker of hers who has been in her way who she thinks is a sleaze bag and like all these other things and unfortunately i made it about 150 pages into the swim before i dnf'd it so we also while scarlet i would say is probably our primary pov we also have another character named carly who is like a freshman at the school she comes from an abusive family and she is very anxious and introverted and there is some fire up in here because uh Carly is by and she's just very nervous and all these other things and I, I know that some of that has to do with um her you know lived experience with her father being abusive and not really knowing what to expect when she was at home and things like that but I ultimately just didn't find this an enjoyable reading experience I didn't care about the characters I didn't care about what was happening other than the first kill at the beginning all she does is just think about I want to kill him I want to hurt him I'm going to do this and it's just very boring the inner monologue of these two characters was tedious to read i was reading it physically and i was like i'm not really enjoying it physically it's like let me try on audio even though i really already knew that i wasn't really liking it and i didn't really care to continue on and i listened to like one or two chapters on audio and i was like i don't care i don't want to be reading this so unfortunately i had to dnf this um which breaks my heart because this is the one like i said that i had the highest hopes for everyone seems to love this and when i said that i was dnfing it in my discord my patron was like one of my patrons friends she was like do you want me to spoil the twist for you and she spoiled the twist for me and i was like hmm i, I was like i, I might want to go find out and i was like you know what no i don't i'm just gonna watch the, the literary dead live show for this book but i do think the twist is one that is worth reading i think it's an interesting twist and i would like to have seen how it was done but i just didn't care and i, I just didn't feel like forcing myself through a book that i wasn't enjoying that would probably be a two star three star max when i wasn't intrigued there was like nothing pulling me forward with that book so i put it down so yeah that's what i have for you right now let me go do some more reading and i'll be back <laughs> As 
as you might can tell this is a look that you have seen and will see multiple times in this video because recently as i've been vlogging over the last couple months uh, my life has just been all over the place and i've struggled with vlogging specifically not with doing the reading for vlogs but like filming mid book updates i'm like okay i put it on my to-do list i'm gonna film this vlog or i do a lot of reading when i'm out of the house and i would usually would obviously prefer to film with my camera and when i have the book in front of me but and also I just look really ugly during the work week so I'm not always enthused to put myself on camera if I'm not looking put together but I say all that to say I read The Lost Ones by Sheena Kamal I listened to this audiobook and this is a very interesting one and I think this is the only novel of the entire year's worth of selections that is part of a series this is the first book and I think a trilogy uh and we're following our main character nora watts uh she is a woman who is very much down on her luck she's had a lot of very difficult circumstances trigger warnings for sexual assault trigger warnings for violence um the sex base in canada and the author the well the main character has a unclear indigenous background she's not really sure of her parentage um so that is well she's not, not that she's really sure but she doesn't really know her parents come from but she is she knows that she is part indigenous and her experience with how she ended up getting pregnant and the assault that she experienced negatively impacted her life and her circumstances and how she looks at the world and while she is living in the basement of her office that she works at as an investigator she is she gets a call one day that's like you I don't know you don't know me but I am the adopted parent of your biological daughter and she's gone missing and we hope that you can find us we know that you were an investigator and we're hoping that maybe she reached out to you and so she goes on this journey to find her daughter and she has a really complicated relationship with us she's like because the trauma involved with this child being coming into the world um both her conception and her coming into the world the trauma involved with you know not wanting to have an open adoption not wanting to ever have anything to do with her daughter and the things that happen and, and that coming into her life and then it coming into her life in such a negative way and it led to a series of events where she has to re-confront the things that were done to her because those same devils and demons that uh, that hurt her are now coming after her daughter for reasons that we find out as we read the story um so uh, this was narrated by my least favorite narrator of all time, which is Bonnie Turpin. Uh, I know she's a favorite of Kayla's and I listened to this so that negatively impacted my experience because I didn't want to read it physically. Um, but I think that if you're intrigued by a mystery, I think this is like a mystery driven thriller. Um, I think you could enjoy it. I, I would also say it's a bit more mystery than thriller, but there are some murders and you know some action scenes and things like that our main character is very capable and i do like that in the main character she has had a lot of circumstances she also is in recovery for alcoholism and that is something that comes up so if you uh suffer from that or you're sober you might want to consider that going into this one but i personally don't think i would be continuing the series or picking up anything else from sheena kamal because i wasn't really compelled but it was an enjoyable reading experience and a very quick listen so i did enjoy that i think i'll settle on like a three star rating She's been really struggling with that, and so she's decided to leave school and go back home and just regroup and, and you know, see if she can get herself together in time for the second semester or perhaps just move on from that. So uh, she goes to like the campus board and she tries to find like, a ride or someone going that way so she can get a ride there. Now, why would she do this rather than just trying to get the bus? anything i don't know but of course if she did that we wouldn't have a story so once she's there she meets this guy who's like oh i'm going that way a couple times over i'll happily take you da -da -da -da. 
So the majority of this story takes place in the ride from our campus, which I think is in New Jersey, to Ohio, which is where they're supposed to be. And very early on, the guy that she's driving, his name is Josh, he is very sketchy. He's getting you know, very strange vibes. And over the course of the 50% of the stories that I've read, various things are happening and leading her to believe that A, he is not who she, he says he is, B, she might be in danger, and C, he might be the person that killed her friend. Um, of course, we gotta have an unreliable narrator, so we follow a character who she's like obsessed with movies. And as a result of mental health issues or whatever, she hallucinates and has these movies in her mind. And so she, for whatever unknown reason, shares this with the guy. And, you know, as he's doing special stuff, he's like, oh, that didn't happen. That must have been like a movie in your mind or whatever. And so she is struggling to differentiate what is going on in reality versus what is just happening in her head. And the guy is using that against her. And at this 50% mark, things have gotten even more tense. And the guy is starting to, like, draw the nice guy act. And he is starting to display some less than kosher behaviors. And where I'm at right now, they just got to this diner. And this is the second opportunity where uh, Charlie has run into someone. And she's trying to decide, can she get help? You know, but the first person didn't believe her. And now... You know, she tried to give her, like, her boyfriend like, a cold word or whatever. But obviously, this is the 1990s. Cell so phones weren't as prevalent. You know, all the other things that we would use today to do this, they're, they're not, you know, applicable. And I think, obviously, that's also why the story takes place in the 90s because that's the type of time frame it would have to be for this story to actually be even somewhat possible. So I think where we are right now, this waitress is attempting to intervene because she feels some bad vibes from them. And I'm excited to see where it's going. This I've listened to the audiobook. It's a very easy listening experience. I've been out of the house maybe an hour, maybe two. Um, that's how I listen to it all. I'm on my way to the bookstore while I'm shopping around and while I've been doing some work. So um, reading this one, having a good time, is definitely not like a favorite of mine. But I think it's a very enjoyable enough listen. But I know Riley Sagan. I know he likes to get ridiculous at the end. So. I see that in my future. So I will come back to you when I finish and let you know what I think. So I finished Survive the Night and it definitely went in a very interesting direction. Um, things definitely were not what they seem and I gotta say I didn't really like the ending. Uh, I know this is one that people really disliked from Riley Sager and personally I think it's better than uh, what was his book first book that i read lock every door which everyone loves i think it's better than that but i don't think it's particularly great um this one is a bit more insular we have like most of it takes place in like one setting in, which is in this car and there aren't that many characters so it's a bit of like an isolated not quite locked room but that's like the vibe and the ending got a little bit wild and i didn't really like the twist uh, not that they were predictable, I just thought they were boring and unexciting and uninteresting. Um, so yeah, I can see why I just didn't have any strong feelings about it. But I think prior to that, like Lock Every Door might have been the one that came before this or maybe Home for Dark, which I think people really liked. And so going from those really great ones in their opinion to this, I can see kind of why that would be disappointing. But I didn't think it was bad necessarily i just didn't think it was particularly good like it was perfectly fine uh, a nice way to spend an afternoon of reading and listening but uh this definitely isn't one that i feel the need to keep uh, i've read this is my first second i want to say this is my third riley sager and it's probably my second favorite but I hated Lock Every Door and then I really liked um, his 2023 release. So I think this is fine. I think if you haven't read any Riley Sager before, I would say maybe start somewhere like this. That way you can enjoy his books more and more as you get to the like the better ones. But I don't think it was horrible. I don't think it's one I would rush out to read or pick up if you haven't already. I do think most people who are interested in this have already read this. But I don't think it was as bad as everyone said. But the ending and the twist did leave a lot to be desired, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning, friends. I am back with an update. So I have read the entirety of this book since we last spoke. So let's talk about it. And that is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. Now this one is what I went into with some trepidation because I have read Samantha Downing before and the first, I read her debut novel back, I wanna say, in 2021. And that was My Lovely Wife. And what I thought was interesting about that one was the premise was really interesting but i felt like all the interesting things were going on in the wife's point of view rather than the husband's so going into this one i have a more personal connection with this one because this one we follow our main character teddy crutcher who is teacher of the year but he makes his students and co-workers and parents and things suffer for their own good because he knows what's best for them and as a teacher myself i've been teaching for seven years now so some of the things that he talks about obviously he teaches high school i teach elementary school he teaches in private school I a public school but some things are are true across teaching and those are the things that I think I enjoyed the most about this because while I am obviously not a sociopath not a psychopath not a serial killer or murderess uh, I have definitely felt some of these same feelings towards administrators towards parents towards students um, that our main character has felt in here and that might make me a bad person but it is what it is so we predominantly follow teddy who is the teacher of the year he's an english teacher we also follow i think his name is zach he is a student who is on teddy's shit list and we also get some povs of different people that are connected to this private school at different points in the story and teddy he has been the way that he is for a long time he thinks that he knows best and sometimes he decides that students are not deserving of the things that they have and he is going to make them suffer in the ways that he is able to do so and that's kind of where the story kicks off where he has given this student zach a b on a paper that was deserving of an a and his parents come to speak with teddy and we see that a lot of things are going on at the school at this moment i think the school is called belmont um and we follow a variety of cast of characters who are students former students teachers administrators at this school and through action through actions of teddy and a couple other people in the story a parent and the head of the like parents association at the school is, dies and a series of deaths and mishappenings happen over the course of the story and I was intrigued by this because of that teacher aspect and the teacher connection, but I can't say that I particularly enjoyed this, nor did I feel particularly compelled to read it. It was an easy read, I will give it that, but I felt that the ending definitely left a lot to be desired. Now, some might say, and this is not a spoiler, but some might say that Teddy and other people pay the ultimate price for their actions, but I don't feel like they were held accountable in the way that I would have found most satisfying in a way that I think was deserving of the characters in the story. I felt that the ending left a lot to be desired and I wanted some different resolutions to the things that were going on. Um, but honestly, I could, this is so realistic. It's crazy, but in a lot of ways, it's so realistic as to the, the power trips that people go on in schools and the relationships between parents and how parents dealing with parents can be some of the worst parts of like teaching in like k-12 um so ultimately i think i'm gonna settle on like a 2.5 three star i don't i think this will be my last samantha downing i've read two books from her now and i haven't enjoyed either one of them so i think our road has ended here well i know most people know this author from her work with bunny which is probably her most successful novel to date all's well was actually my first novel by mona awad and this was such an interesting reading experience um one thing that i want to say about this book is that the it has a lot of chronic pain rep and the chronic pain rep was so good and the writing was so visceral that i felt like a, a transference i felt the pain that our main character was in was like transferring to my own body as a person who deals with chronic pain and i don't know if it was because i was recently diagnosed or just the writing was so good but when the character was just going into so much detail and so much depth and just the monotony of constantly being in pain and trying all these different strategies like i really felt that but like that's a negative feeling to have 
and it didn't positively impact my reading experience because I was just while I was reading I was suffering and I guess that is art in its truest form because art imitates life but uh this was definitely an interesting novel to read it felt like a fever dream there were parts of the book where I didn't know if what was happening was really happening or if it was a dream that a character was having or if she was high or what and I think that's part of the experience of reading this is you don't actually know in some parts what is happening and what is real and also because the people that we are primarily following are people who are part of the arts um these are theater actors and so it's like is it actually that way or are you like dramatizing the things that are going on um and we follow this this play that is being put on by the colleges like theater troupe and like the inner workings of academia and the politicking and the things that go on and it's like pecking order and all these things that are happening and how chronic pain and all these unfulfilled desires like negatively impact you as a person and impact your personal relationships and we watch our main character we watch her fall we watch her rise and it's such an interesting novel I didn't love it but I definitely felt something while I was reading it it's not a novel that I think you can read passively I do think it will like I said pull strong feelings out of you if you are a person who deals with chronic pain I would tread lightly with this one because the chronic pain rep is so just so real you feel it yourself and that that was I think I read this and I know another one of my friends Stephanie read this and we both have chronic pain and we were like I am hurting reading this book like it's it's hitting a little bit too close to home um I definitely wanted to read more Mona Awad and I have since purchased Mona Awad's most recent novel I haven't read anything else I'm waiting for a specific video to read Bunny but I feel like Mona Awad is definitely an author I want to pick up from because I enjoy having an experience with a book I enjoy when books make me feel something make me feel strong emotions whether they're positive or negative and I think that if something that like that intrigues you I would say pick this one up but just be wary that it is a bit of a fever dream um so take that how you will unfortunately I have some pretty bad news when it comes to our next pick which is my heart is a chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones this is the first book in the Indian Lake series it was originally a standalone but I guess because of the success of the novel uh it became a trilogy and so in this one we're following our main character Jay Daniels who is a horror slasher obsessed teenage girl and based on the events that are happening in her town she believes that her where she lives is about to become the location of the next slasher so this is my first Stephen Graham Jones and unfortunately I think it also may be my last because what I didn't know about Stephen Graham Jones and maybe I'd heard it before but I, I can't recall having like assigned this fact to Stephen Graham Jones's writing is that his writing style is a bit stream of consciousness and that just does not like that just doesn't mesh well with me um from the second that I started reading this I disliked the writing style like I remember putting my Patreon Discord like this like five minutes after I was reading I was like I hate this writing style it's so uncomfortable not in an unsettling fun way that horror books tend to be but just I don't like the flow of the sentences I don't really know what's happening it's hard to follow these tangents that the main character is going on like I, I really am struggling to connect the things that are going on and I already was disliking the writing and then um we hit, we get on page like cutting and self-harm and i'm just like okay here's the thing i know that this is a horror novel that's fine i know that horror comes with a slew of trigger warnings and content warnings and things like that and i think that you to a degree know what you're getting yourself into but when you're gonna have such flagrant cutting like so, such flagrant self-harm in chapter one i do think it's the responsibility of the author or the publisher to put content warnings in the beginning of the book and given that i was already hating it and then that was like the last straw so i checked in my discord and i was like hey like is is this like what i can expect from the entire novel or, or what or is it get better and they were like if you don't like it right now i think you're only just gonna hate it as it gets worse so i decided to in a rare sequence of events for me cut my losses um, and so I DNF this after one chapter, which I hate to do that in the theme vlog. I hate that I have had two DNFs and I talked to myself and I was like, hmm, maybe I should just go back and finish. They never learned. So this will be my only DNF. But I really did not like that book. And I feel like I've suffered enough. <laughs> uh, I, you know, if you've been following my channel this year, you know, I've been having a rough reading year. And sometimes I struggle with like 
figuring out when I should just let a book go if it's not working for me. And given that I had such a negative reaction to this book so early on, I'm just like, I can't make myself suffer through that. And I wasn't able to follow what was happening physically and i knew I, it would be even worse on audiobooks i didn't even try the audiobook well i listened to a sample audio before i decided to read it physically and i didn't like the narrator so not liking the narrator combined with the stream of conscious writing style i think Stephen graham jones isn't for me and i'm told that the writing in here is pretty much the standard of all his novels so i do think i'm going to be unhauling the only good indians which is also my tbr so unfortunately this is what's happening with this book and i hate that but here we are. Hello. Welcome <clears throat> to my classroom. So I am listening to the audiobook of The Death of Jane Moore by Caitlin Sterling. And I'll tell you what the book about later. I'm about 150 pages in. I don't think the audiobook I started it yesterday. And our main character, Jane, is so Given that the book is called The Death of Jane Lawrence, I guess she's going to do these stupid things that are going to end up leading to her death and demise. But it's, it's very frustrating. So the premise of the book is that we follow our main character, Jane. And this is like in the secondary world or whatever. Um, but it's like the olden days, but not too olden. And she uh, is an orphan and she was raised by like, friends of her family but they are about to move on to a new post and the place they're moving to is a lot more expensive and her like annuity from her parents' death would not cover her expenses at this new place. And the people have offered to make up the difference, but she's like, I would rather, you know, get married and just stay here because I like it here. So she has a very analytical approach to doing things. I, I would almost say that it's like neurodivergent coded, but I don't know if that's like the popular opinion or not, but she decides that she wants to marry this doctor who is new to town. Uh, his name is Augustus Lawrence or Augustine Lawrence. So she goes to him and she makes her proposal at like this marriage would be like a business arrangement. I could be like a nurse and accountant for you. You aren't married and I assume it's because you don't want to be and we don't have to have a traditional marriage, but it can be like a business arrangement. I can help you. You help me, etc. So she convinces him to get married, and my coworker, my co-teacher, just told me he's not here today, and I was planning on him leading our lesson today. So that's great for me. Great for me. Great for me. Um. Anyway, let me focus. Um, we find out that. He has this one stipulation. He's like, we can get married. We can make this happen. But the only thing is that you can never come to my family manor. He has like a house in the city at the, where his surgical practice is. And they're like living quarters there. And he's like, you can only. So I have finished The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. I got cut off when I was talking about this earlier. But this is just not a book that I enjoyed. I think that the original setup and the atmosphere was what's working for me. But our main character, Jane, is just too stupid to live. And I cannot abide that, sadly. Um, the romance, I didn't find particularly believable. And the actual core of what was going on with the story, it just wasn't unsettling. It wasn't spooky to me. It was mostly just annoying. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I just don't like gothic books because this didn't really do anything for me. And I think I'm gonna close out with giving this one two stars. Based on what I've read here, A, I love the cover. So the cover designer, I would definitely, I'm sure, and maybe I already have, picked up another cover drawn by them or illustrated by them, but I don't think at this point I would read another Caitlin Starling because her other book that I know of, A Luminous Day, I've seen it before. I read the synopsis, but I've never been inclined to pick it up. And um, her upcoming release doesn't really sound interesting to me. And I don't know that this is one that I would have picked up other than for this cover and for the Literally Dead Book Club. So um, I think I'm still going to give gothic books another shot, even though the ones that I've read that i can recall most recently haven't been hits for me and it could be that i don't like you know gothic books 
as a subgenre that could be it as well but this one was just it just wasn't particularly good so this isn't one that i recommend this isn't one that i think you need to go out and pick up or borrow from your library if you haven't read it already so what have i learned from this video this is my year of literally dead um i read or attempted to read eight more of the books that i had not read from the 2021 selections i didn't come out of this video with any new favorites that i hadn't read already but i have learned more about my reading taste and that's always valuable to me as a reader as a person who is constantly trying to you know hone in on what i like and what i enjoy which doesn't mean that i'm only going to read things that i know i'm going to like and enjoy because i like to be widely read and, and have a lot of variety but it does help me when it comes to curating the books that I'm picking up in the future so if I had to tell you which of these new books is probably my favorite it would probably be when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole because while I didn't love the first half the second half was very interesting and very engaging and I also appreciated what this one had to say um, which I definitely would not have expected to be the outcome from this but we all know that my favorite book from this entire vlog or from this year selection of Lily Dead books would have been uh, House of Leaves by um, Mark Z. Danieluski, which is a five star read, one of my favorite books of all time. And even from like without this stack, I have read and loved other literally dead book club books. Like I gave a five star to What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. Um, and I've also learned that other selections, most of these I think are thriller and a couple of horror, but not many of these are mysteries. The only one that I would say is a mystery perhaps is The Lost Ones by Sheena Kamal. Um, and this wasn't a particularly good mystery and I don't think this one was pretty well received by the book club either. But I definitely think that in the future I'll be keeping my eye on the horror selections because those are the ones that I'm more likely to have luck with. And that works out because in 2024 I will be hosting co-hosting the Little Day Book Club for a horror selection. So uh, I think this has gone well ish you know if nothing else i have taken eight books off my tbr in one video and that's always exciting so if you have made it to the end of this video let's leave a knife emoji because there are lots of killing in this series of books and i will see you in my next one goodbye